Hello everyone. Today we are going to learn about Hello everyone. Today we are going to learn about the topic nutrition in animals, chapter 2. So here we'll be dealing with introduction, digestion in humans, digestion in different animals, as well as the feeding and digestion in the unicellular organism namely amoeba. So first let's get to know what is nutrition. We already know what is nutrition from the first chapter, nutrition in plants. So nutrition is a mode of taking food by an organism and its utilization by the body. Now the different components of food are, we have the vitamins, carbohydrate, protein, fats, vitamin and minerals. Carbohydrate we require in larger quantity compared to protein, fats and vitamin and minerals. The component of foods are the complex substances which we cannot obtain as such in our body. So they have to be broken down into simpler forms. So in this figure we can easily illustrate the complexity of the substances if a substances are such complex one when the body undergoes the digestion it is broken down to form simpler substances so that's what happen in digestion in simple form in our body as well as in animals body so next let's learn about the digestion in uh, animals in human so here you can see different methods of food intake is there. The method by which the animal takes their food is called holozoic nutrition. So what is holozoic nutrition? It's a process by which the whole food is taken into our body. That is called holozoic nutrition. So let's get to the nutrition in animal. So there are five digestive processes there. First one is ingestion, second digestion, absorption, assimilation and ejection. These five steps occur in the digestive uh, organisms, organs of our body in humans as well as in animals. So these are the five steps. Don't forget it comes first is ingestion, then digestion occur, absorption, assimilation and ejection. So first learn about the different steps which are involved what are they mean so the five steps we already learned is ingestion digestion absorption assimilation ejection ingestion is a process where the body take the food that process that is inside our body we are taking the food hence it is called ingestion second process is digestion it is a process in which the food which we eat in large size they are broken down by the role of different enzymes in our body different juices in our body and make them in a paste form or in a water soluble molecules that process is called digestion the third process is absorption the process by which the digestive digested food they will pass into the intestinal wall the walls of the intestine in which there will be blood will be present so it will be passed into the bloodstream the nutrients will be passed into the bloodstream and that process is called absorption assimilation is the fourth step which include the absorption of the nutrients and then using those nutrients for the growth and repair of the body and the last step is ejection in ejection the undigested food which is to be removed from our body we cannot store this undigested food for a very long time it has to be removed from our body and that process is called ejection so here in human digestive system we have a elementary canal and also we have certain glands are there which is associated with this elementary canal so we'll see the various types of um, sequence in which the digestion occur is first the food we put it in the mouth it's also called buccal cavity the food passes through the esophagus stomach intestine large intestine rectum and anus and the glands which are associated with them are the salivary glands 
which is located in the mouth liver which is the largest gland in our body pancreas which is the second largest gland in our body which is located below the stomach and there are various duct or pipe or tube we can say through which this gland will open into the alimentary canal and pour out their secretion of their juices into the alimentary canal so that the digestion can happen very easily So this is our human digestive system. So you can see here, this is the buccal cavity or the mouth. The food is broken down with the help of teeth and the juice which is there in the salivary gland. And then the food passes through the esophagus. Esophagus or foot pipe is a long tube made up of muscle. Enters into a sac like structure called stomach. It moves to the after digestion of the food or remaining of the food for around three to four hours it goes into the c-shaped first part of the intestine that is small intestine called duodenum after that the intestine is highly thin and it is very long and that part is called small intestine here the digestion as well as further absorption occur after that the food passes to the large intestine so then it is stored in the rectum and given out. So you can see here the gallbladder. Gallbladder is associated with liver which is the largest gland. And gallbladder their role is to store the juice which is secreted by the, produced by the liver. Pancreas is located between the large intestine and the stomach. It also secretes certain amount of juice which help in digestion of the food material. So as we put the food in our mouth, we have following structures which are present in the mouth. We have various types of teeth are present in the upper and the lower jaw. So teeth we classify as incisors which are the front teeth which are also called biting teeth. It is present both on the upper jaw and as well as in the lower jaw. Then we have canines which are sharp dragger like teeth which help in tearing of food material which is present both on the upper jaw as well as on the lower jaw. And then we have followed by premolar and molar. So premolar again is present in the upper and lower jaw. Their role is to grind the foot and make it into paste. So incisors help in cutting the foot, canine help in tearing of the foot, premolar and molar they help in chewing or grinding of foot. So after the foot remain in the mouth it passes through the foot pipe. So this is our foot pipe. So here the green color is the foot. So you can see there is a the contraction and relaxation of the muscles occur as the foot moves down to the stomach. So you can see here there where there is no foot, no bulging occur. Wherever the foot is here, the muscles of the foot pipe, they bulge and it reaches into the stomach. So first we'll learn what are the things which are present in the mouth. Mouth or buccal cavity contain teeth, tongue and salivary glands. The digestion begins in our mouth where we chew the food with the help of teeth. We already learned the role of the teeth is to cut the food piece into smaller pieces, chew them, grind them. So when the chewing occur into smaller pieces, it also mixed with the saliva and that process is called mastication. So we have salivary glands present. The salivary glands secrete saliva. There are three pairs of salivary glands are present. So the saliva help in digestion of the food because the food doesn't remain in the mouth for a very long time. So only a very short period only the food remain in the mouth. 
and the role of the tongue is to mix the food and the saliva tongue is a muscular organ that help to eat the uh, move the food as well as the it mixes the saliva with the food and helps in swallowing it then we can also taste the food with the help of taste buds which are present on the tongue we can taste different taste buds are there bitter salt sweet and salty teeth is the cutting and grinding of food it also help in tearing of food before we slow it uh, swallow it so we have in a life span of a person there are two sets of teeth are there first set is called the milk teeth a child has only 20 teeth 10 on each jaws and these teeth because they will remain in the mouth of a child up to 8 years hence it is called milk teeth after that the permanent teeth takes its place permanent teeth they are set of 32 six on the each jaw so four incisors two canine four premolar and six molar so this is a figure which is given in your textbook so you can see here 1 2 3 4 incisors so you can see they are more flat in shape then we have the canine which are more sharper pointed as well as you can see next two are the premolar and molar so it is four in the lower jaw incisors two canine and then you can see there are four premolar and six molar in the lower jaw alone esophagus is the second part which connect the mouth to the stomach so the swallowed food will pass into the food pipe also called esophagus the esophagus leads from the mouth to stomach and esophagus is made up of muscles the food is pushed down by the movement of the muscles of the food pipe and that movement is called peristalsis it take place throughout the alimentary canal not only in our esophagus but throughout the alimentary canal that is small intestine large intestine or stomach everywhere this muscular contraction and relaxation take place so that is peristalsis so it take place throughout the alimentary canal which helps in pushing the food downwards next we have stomach stomach is a stomach is a thick wall back which is present on the left side of the abdomen and esophagus will bring the slightly digested food because the food remain in the mouth for a very short period so the esophagus will bring the digested food into the stomach and the stomach walls have glands which will secrete the juice called gastric juice so there are three types of substances are there in the gastric juice hydrochloric acid enzymes called pepsin and there is a mucus so first learn about the hydrochloric acid hydrochloric acid their main role is to make the nature of the stomach acidic then only the enzyme pepsin which is secreted by the glands of the stomach will be able to digest the food especially the protein in the food now they also kill the bacteria which enters along along with the food second is mucus the mucus help to protect the stomach wall wall because it is a even though it is not a strong acid it might damage the walls of the stomach so mucus they form a protective wall around the stomach and the partially digested food the complete digestion occur only in the small intestine so the food goes from the stomach into the small intestine pepsin it helps in the digestion of protein in the food and the food remain in the stomach for 3 to 4 hours so in this module we will be learning only up to the second part of the module we'll be learning about the intestine small intestine as well as the digestion in other animals so thank you all for watching